Um, good. So what I want to do, first of all, as I said, my name is Dr. Roper. I am the director of the writing center. We call it the Right Place. And this is the pre-writing workshop, pre-resume writing workshop. We're calling it Three Strategies for Success. As I said, we're kicking off Career Preparedness Week here um, at a and as I mentioned, we are in partnership with Career Services and want to make sure you are aware of the activities that will be going on this week. On Wednesday, we have the part-time job fair, grad, um, handshake, LinkedIn headshots, resume writing workshop, and then the, um, Thursday, 30-second elevator pitch. And um, I believe that's Friday, right? Am I doing those dates right? I think it's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yes. Friday is the resume review and mock interviews. So we want you to be prepared uh -oh, for all of that. There we go. And uh, of course the contact if you have questions for the um, activities that are going on the rest of the week is Angel Lee and her contact information is here. As I said, we are the writing center, not the career center, but we work in conjunction. So we're just doing today's workshop. All the other, other activities will be planned out of career services. So if you have questions, reach out to Angel. All right, I see your comments. <laughs> Everyone has similar concerns about their resumes. Understood. All right, let's see if we can advance this slide here. Okay, so what we are calling, what I am calling today's workshop is the moves to make before the resume. And I'm referring to the moves as power moves because it's really crucial. Where you begin is really crucial to how you end. And I don't know that we, a lot of times we see the nice, pretty finished product and we just think, oh, I got to have that right off the top. I got to just create something that looks like that. And we go find some templates and we just start kind of plugging stuff in. But I think it's really important for us to think about what we're doing before we actually do it. And so you might think of this, if any of you have attended any of my workshops in the past, or if you've had any conversations with me at all, you will know or soon learn that I put a lot of emphasis in the pre-work whether it's putting together a resume or any writing that you might do. And so what we're talking about in today's workshop is all of this pre-work. And so I want you to think of, um, think of it as you, you're needing some scrap paper or maybe a notebook to kind of get some of this stuff down. It's, it's part of the writing process and you are writing a resume. And so the same, uh, the same steps that work with any writing task are what will help you to create a really strong resume as well. Let me make sure we are recording today's workshop, by the way. I hope, yes, I think we are. Um, hopefully everyone is okay with that. I think it would be, be good to have today's workshop recorded. So power move number one then, if we are thinking about the work that we do before we actually begin to write, can we get this? There we go. The first move you want to make is, as I said, you want to sit down and put everything on the table. Everything meaning all of your experiences. Think back over the last five years or so, at least, to the things that you've been involved with. And that includes the classes you've taken, volunteer work that you have participated in. That means paid and unpaid work counts, internships, co-ops, military service, even athletic um, involvement, you need to put out on the table and you want to look at all of the things that you have done. And it's very important that you look at them in detail. And so you want to, first of all, list out the different things that you've been involved with and list out the dates and um, periods of time that you worked with those different groups. And then you want to sort of organize them according to, so first of all, you want to list them out and think about how many years or months, whatever, that you spent with each one and what those dates were. You may have to go back and look for those dates and things like that. Um, and then you want to organize it. I suggest creating a table with two columns. And in the first column, you're going to list out all the things you did, all the places you worked for or volunteered with, um, what your title was, particularly if you had more than one title, any awards or recognitions that you acquired while you were in that 
those different positions. But then next to that, in the second column, what I suggest is that you answer these questions. What did you have to know in order to do what you did? And that's where you need to spend a little time thinking about it because yes, you may have just been a cashier at a grocery store, but what did you have to know in order to be a cashier? What, what kinds of skills did you have to have in order to do that job well? And so don't minimize any work that you've done. Don't put on your list over there only the ones that you think count. Put everything down and then think about, well, what skills did I have to have? Did I have to work with numbers? Did I have to keep up with things? Did I have to be organized? Did I have to manage people or things? How much, how many did I have to take charge of or be in, in charge of, be responsible for? And then did you work alone or did you work with a team? And what did that look like? How, what was your relationship uh, to, to others as you worked in that particular area? All of these things matter. And as I said before, in particular, you want to think about how much or how many of everything that you did. How many hours did you put in a week or a day or a month? How much did you have to manage um, in terms of quantity as much as possible? If you, if you can quantify, if you, if you uh, worked at a, at a camp in the summer, how many kids would you say you you counseled over the course of that summer. You worked for three months in the summer. Maybe you worked on and off with 100 kids total if you counted it all up, right? Those kinds of numbers will really be useful. Also, what kinds of increases happened during the time that you were working with the organization? What, what sort of goals did the organization hit during the time that you were employed there? The reality is if you were part of the team, then in one way or another, you can align yourself with the successes of that organization. And so you want to think about what did our company or what did the company do during the time that I was there that is noteworthy? Did you have to implement problem solving skills? Did you have to put out fires? Did you have to break up fights? <laughs> think about all of these skills that were required in order to do your job well, particularly those that show leadership and team spirit and support and even ethics, moral ethic, work ethic, you know, working 40 hours a week while um, raising a family and going to school in the evenings. That is, that is good stuff. So just put it all down on paper and then we're going to figure out how to work it in. Power move number two is to do your homework. So once you take an inventory of what you have done, and what you're capable of, you then want to look at the company or organization that you are looking to be hired by. Why do you want to work for this company? Why do you want to work for this organization? Is it just because it has name recognition or just because they're offering a job or they're, they're offering something that sounds interesting to you? You need to know as much as you can about the organization that um, you are attempting to become a part of. And that can be as simple as going to their website. They usually put a lot of good information out there on what they are, what they are about and who they employ and what they do. And so these are the questions that you need to answer for yourself. You need to make sure you know as much as you can about this business that you're wanting to become part of. How long have they been around? What services do they offer? What successes have they had? And what awards and recognitions have they acquired? Because again, you wanna know as much as you can about them, but you also wanna think about how what you have done aligns with what they are currently doing. What do you know about their current employees? Go to their staff page and see what the people look like. See if they provide you with any biographical information about those employees. How do you fit in with who they already have employed in their company? And don't think because none of those people look like you that you don't have a chance. The very fact that you look different might be your advantage, or if looking at what they bring to the organization may help you to think about, well, they have people who do this, this, and this, but they don't have anyone on their team who knows what I know about this, right? So those things you can think about as you look at what they already are doing. In particular, you may want to think about what the company lacks. Obviously, they lack something because they're, they have put out a notice that they are, they are in need of a particular employee or type of employer to fill a particular position. So think about what it is that they don't have or that they don't have enough of that you might be able to provide. 
what qualifications does the job require, but don't be discouraged by the qualifications that are required if you don't meet all of them. If you meet any of them, you should give it a try and apply because a lot of times they will put out there the, the best case scenario. If they had their dream employee, they would want them to have all of these qualifications, but they may not, there may not be that perfect person out there. And so you may still be the perfect person because you have enough of those qualifications. What level of education is expected? What degree field and what skills are needed to do the job? This will all prepare you for um, how you will present yourself to the organization. Hmm. Sorry, someone is trying to get into the meeting today and I don't know why it's not letting her in. Sorry, one moment. Okay, so here's an example of what I mean by doing your homework. On the same note paper, notepad, whatever you're using to lay everything out, now I want you to take those two lists that you created with the previous jobs that you had and the skills that were acquired and add another column. Okay, you used to work at McDonald's and you acquired these particular skills. Now align those with the company that you are applying to. Describe how the skills you gained working at McDonald's fits with the job you're applying to now. And you know, whatever that job might be. Sometimes stay at home moms think, oh, I can't put down there that I was a full time homemaker. Well, put that down and think about the skills that you've acquired. You don't have to put on your resume that you were a full time homemaker, but you can still put down the skills that you have as a result of working with children for the last 10 years. And so it's creating these sort of alignments that will help you to kind of see what you actually have potential to bring. Power move number three is to use the formula. So I want to, first of all, have us look at some sample resumes and just look at the different ways that we can present ourselves on a resume. This is a traditional resume, which has a neat an orderly chronology from the most, most recent job all the way back to the first job. And over on the right, she has listed her skills and some references. She has her GPA and educational information at the top. This is sort of a standard traditional uh, resume with a description of each of the jobs that she has had before and what she has done. Then there are those what we call skills resumes, which don't go in that chrono chronological order, but instead emphasize the skills that have been acquired in previous positions. So at the top of the, the resume on the left, Marcella Cope has indicated her main objective. And notice that the objective statement is very specific to the company that she's seeking, an employment, seeking employment at. Um, to help create high quality CD-ROM products in, um, I can't read that, Metatax Meta Meta New Media Solution Division. So she's saying, my objective is to do this for your company, basically. It's a very, it's not a general kind of, I want to work in, in, in engineering kind of statement. It needs to be very specific. And then she has these sections that um, are summarized around the particular experience she has doing the kind of work that she's seeking to do. And so there's no need for a chronology in this skills resume because the emphasis is on the skills that she's acquired and what those skills are. And um, she has them listed according to what matters most for that company that she's applying to. Similarly, on the right-hand side, you'll notice uh, the focus again is on those skills that have been acquired and the chronology of employment is at the bottom of this one uh, because it's less important than the skills um, that have been acquired. But you notice that in this one on the right, at the top, there is still a mention of the education because this person at least has educational background that is relevant to the position. And so they wanted to, to make that prominent. 
And so and all of these resumes are slightly different and they emphasize different things for a reason. It's, it, it's very particular to what the person brings and they put at the top what is most important for the potential employer to see. Even a kid who has doesn't have a lot of experience, work experience, can put at the top of his or her resume those courses, those projects they've done in classes that are relevant to the work that they seek to do at this for this company. So you notice this resume is one of a kid, a, a student who is still in school, in fact, and they put their education at the top, the expected graduation date, the related courses that they have or are taking, and then there's a description of a course project that demonstrates his skill in a particular area. So your question might be, which of these do I use? And the answer is any one that fits you and the job that you're applying for. There's no one type of resume that everyone has to use. It's not a one size fits all kind of thing. So you need to think about the assessment that you took of your past experiences and the job uh, requirements and how those align. And then think about what do I need to make most prominent on the resume that I put together. Now you may struggle with the language and the words that are needed to make yourself sound really strong. And so I want to talk for a minute about the formula for that language, for putting that language together. First of all, you want to use keywords from the job description itself. That's where the homework comes in. You need to look at how they are articulating their need as a company and borrow from that. You notice the action words that they use that they are expecting a person to be able to do and use that same language on your resume. So develop projects, plans, identify tasks and milestones, drive assigned projects, prepare and present capstone presentation. Notice the action words. So as you describe what you need to do or what you can do based on what you've done in the past, you wanna use, try to use as many of those same keywords as possible. And absolutely, you wanna use action verbs always, particularly those that show leadership teamwork, management, um, responsibility. So if we were to look back on those um, sample resumes that we just had showed you, you would notice that they were using action words to demonstrate what they have done, what they're capable of doing, and they're using this particular action words that they are, that are, they identified in the job announcement itself. So I want to also talk about what I'm calling the formula, okay? So in addition to using those action words that show leadership, that show management, that show diligence, um, you want to combine. So as you're describing each of your, each of the jobs that you've had, you want to have, you want to set it up like this or think of it like this. I need to state the action that I did in my previous job. And I want to add, and I want to connect that to some outcome. The implied or, or explicit then needs to be the benefit to that organization that my work contributed. So notice in this first example, the stated action is that this person took initiative to learn about major products. The outcome that they tie it to is in order to help customers solve problems. What's implied in that statement to in order to help customers solve problems is, is key word problem solving, right? So this person took action to solve problems in this particular context, working in this particular company. And so the implied benefit to the organization that you are applying to is that, oh, this is a person who takes initiative and solves problems to help customers, right? And so stating it in that way implies the potential benefit to the company that you're applying to. You could even state it explicitly. I ensured that by providing a warm greeting and providing prompt checkout service, customers received outstanding service and our store was the highest earning in the state for the three, for three consecutive years. There you stated explicitly, I did this, had this outcome, and it was this benefit specifically to the organization. So either of these examples is using the formula, stating the action and the outcome, which has implied or explicit benefit to the organization. If you keep that in mind in the way that you describe what you have done, 
keeping in mind to use beginning each of these descriptions with that action word, that power word, that keyword, uh, you will be able to present yourself uh, as a strong candidate. Here are some other examples. Conducted research. Okay, that says what was done, but there's no indication of the outcome. Utilize Excel, sorted data. Great, these are things that were done, but we don't have that outcome or benefit. So on the right side, if we were to revise that, if we said conducted research to identify patterns um, of chronic diseases, now it's like, oh, I didn't just conduct research, but I did it in order to do something that was beneficial, right? You could say you just created charts in your previous job, but who cares? But if you say that you use Excel to create a database of 5,000 customers, now we have the quantity, we have the software that was utilized, which indicates a skill with particular software. And it also shows that you were able to create a database and create charts. So it gives so much more of what you're capable of doing in order to meet the manager's needs, right? So that statement of the explicit benefit to the company that you were working for is really important. Helped clients, great, you helped clients, glad to know. Who cares? But if you're able to say, met with clients to determine needs, formed and met groups based on needs and goals, meeting needs, achieving goals, helping customers, you know, these are things that a, a potential employer is going to be interested in. So you want to make sure that you're doing yourself justice by, by articulating what you are capable of. Conducted research and made recommendations. Okay doesn't really give me much. But if you say you conducted research to determine trends and gaps, that shows some kind of a, a higher awareness and ability rather than just someone who's a cog in the wheel that just does stuff without thinking, right? Um, so I've, I've talked a lot. I know um, you guys are out there, you're quiet, listening, but I wanna see if this is connecting with you, if this is making sense for you. So here's an example of an entry on a job, on a resume. So this person works for Kroger, they were a cashier, they have that the dates they worked were from August 2015 to August 2018, and they've listed what they did in that role. Put merchandise on shelf, use cash register to process payments, helped customers. How many of you think that you could beef up those, des those descriptions of that, that previous work to add the stated outcome and implied or explicit benefit to the organization. What's another way that this person can explain what they did if they were to use our formula? Who's brave enough to try it out? I can try. Can you Go hear me? It. Yes. Who? What? Tell me your name. My name is Shemaya Bidwa. All right, Shamaya. Uh, yeah, so good to see I, you. Go ahead. Good to see you, too, Ms. Rofer. <laughs> um, okay, so maybe we can say um, organize merchandise on shelves to meticulously organize um, merchandise on shelves to improve visibility for our customers. Yes. How about visibil visibility of product? to yeah. customers. Yeah. Good. What else? Who else? Somebody else try. What about help customers or used cash register? How can we beef that up a little bit to show the outcome and benefit? Um, this is Taylor. Hey, by the Hi, way. Hi, Taylor. Um, for used cash register, I would say, um, Use advanced point of sale, point of sale registers or point of sale equipment, maybe, or yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. to process payments. I will leave to process payments. Okay. Now, when we're dealing with money and 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 exchange of of money, what is what do you think is going to be really important for an employer to know that you're able to do? Maintain a, a certain amount of money. Yeah. yeah. So being accurate, being um, 
you know, that trust, trust component. <laughs> I don't know how you would articulate that, but yeah. So think, when you think about money, you want to think, I want to make sure I state it in such a way that it's clear that I, you know, my cash register always balanced out at the end of the day. You, know, you can even say, you know, always had balanced, um, what do they call it? Balanced. Um, hmm. Yeah, there you go. That, that kind of thing is going to be really important to, to demonstrate that you didn't just, you weren't just a cashier, but you were all, you always balanced at the end of the day. You're, you were always accurate and efficient, you know, accuracy, efficiency. So think about those kinds of action words that are particularly going to um, articulate what you were able to do, you know, especially when you're dealing with money. You may end them responsibility. What about that? So like if you're, if you are able to say how much money you managed every day or every week, that would be good too. What else? What's important about helping customers that may need to be articulated a little more or brought, brought um, up? Let's see, you could say you share product knowledge with customers, making recommendations for them. Mm -hmm. um, In order to, so you might want to think, yeah. What was the benefit? Mm -hmm. um, maintain friendly and professional customer interaction. Yeah, good. Very good. So you can easily see then how this kind of mediocre listing of, of duties for this person who was a cashier can be really beefed up to demonstrate an ability and skill that could easily translate transfer to a potential job, right? Just in this, just in thinking a little, little bit more about what skills were acquired or needed to do that job. Now, we looked at two different types of resumes, the traditional resume and the skills resume. There are many reasons you may have long periods on your resume where you were not employed or when you were not uh, employed in a particular field in which you are currently seeking uh, a job. There may be illness, there may have been child rearing, caring for sick relative, attending school, incarceration, career change, all kinds of things. So as we think about which of those resumes we want to use, think about whether or not you can do a chronological, this was my current, this is my current job and here are all the jobs I've had previous to now without there being these long spaces of time that are un unaccounted for. If there's something uncomfortable or if there are just long spaces because you stopped to have kids for a few years, think about using that skills format, skills resume format where the chronology is less important. Um, and remember that the resume is what gets your foot in the door. So you're being very selective with what you put on each one. Like I said, you need a separate resume for each job that you are applying to so that you can make it very custom to the needs of that company. And, and keep in mind that you're selective not to be deceptive, but to put your best foot forward. And you can, you can, you know, your winning personality will will work out the rest once your once your foot is in the door and once you have that interview, they'll ask you the questions that they want to about anything that they didn't get enough of on uh, from your resume. So you can explain them when the time comes. Um, but again, think about what is going to be most important to the potential employer that you are appealing to and, and let that be your guide as to what to include and how on your resume. I also encourage you to include a cover letter which helps to uh, helps your resume to stand out. And it's a, it's a very personal touch. It's a way to make a more personal connection with the person that you are um, the company that you're trying to be hired by. And so that goes back to doing your homework. You're going to want to find out who the person is that you need to address this to so that it, so that you're able to address them specifically. You may need to make a phone call to the secretary and say, hey, who is the hiring manager or what have you. Get that person's name so you can speak to them directly. The to whom it may concern kind of greetings can easily be sort of cast off. So as much as possible, you want to make that personal connection with your cover letter. It would come along as it, just what it says. It's a cover, <laughs> something that goes along with, goes over top of the resume. And it's basically to say, hi, I'm Jane Doe. Here's who I am. Here are those things that are, that I bring to 
this potential this position and I want to make sure you see them when you look at my resume that's basically what the cover letter is saying and it gives you an opportunity to put into some context what is just in a bulleted list on the resume so you want to be really thoughtful about what you want to say or what you need to say to this employer in this letter because there may be something on the resume that needs that you need to bring a little more attention to and maybe explain a bit and this is your chance to do that so you want to begin your cover letter off by stating the position that you're applying to and summarizing your qualifications for the position and that's like two sentences at the very beginning you want to very quickly get their attention and help them to know exactly what it is that you're writing for they don't have a lot of time so you have to you got to get it quick and then in the body of the paper in a paragraph no more than two you want to develop those major major qualifications you want to put a little meat on the bones as they say so if you say that you're good at problem solving give an example of a time that you solved a problem for your previous employer that's what we need in the cover letter you're not able to do that on the resume and any relate um, and relate any of your achievements to the work that you you'd be doing in the new job and then you want to get out like i said a cover letter is quick you explain up top what you're writing for you highlight what needs to be highlighted on the resume and then you ask don't demand for an interview the delicate balance that you have to strike in a cover letter is pumping yourself up as someone who's great but connecting what greatness you have with what it is that they need and so it's not just that you're great but it's that you would be great for them so you want to make sure you highlight the benefit that you would like to be to their comp to this company and then make it easy for them to find you tell them when you're available tell them if it's an out of town job tell them you you can be in town on these particular dates because it's a kind of a nice way also of hopefully um, if they're interested in you wanting to cat and snap you up while you're there while you're in town anyway or when you know you can travel rather than you having to try to figure that out later and then of course ending on a positive forward-thinking note is very important and then providing them with that contact information too so they don't have to go searching for it so what you see here is a sample cover letter which exemplifies what i was just saying this person says i am interested in the position of regional manager announced in the february 24 issue of the new york times i will receive an aas in finance in may and already have a year's experience as a financial sales representative notice the language already have a year's experience so they're just they're not yet graduated but they want to make sure the employer knows they already have a certain amount of experience that's really really key then in the next paragraph this person kind of fleshes out what they mean by this experience and they talk about this course that they took in their program and what they had to do in that course and they really highlight the skills <clears throat> that were needed in order to accomplish that task notice if you read this carefully the skills that they describe are aligned perfectly with the job that they are applying for so they're basically telling the employer i'm ready to hit the ground running and so these two paragraphs or three give some examples specifically of their ability to do that based on what they've done in the past it's not enough to say you've done it you have to prove and show how you've done it and then they close out the letter with a forward think forward looking statement which basically says can we set up set up an interview to talk about this more i'll be in new york during these dates and i'd love the opportunity to talk to you about how i can join the company right and so they close it out in that way so that's an example of how to the three steps for success the power moves that you need to make before you actually write the resume and uh, and then of course that bonus at the end is to uh, construct a personal cover letter which highlights those important skills that you demonstrate we are here to help you pull this all together each of you has a very unique situation and experience and background i'm sure there are different ways in which you can present yourself depending on what job you're applying to and so we are here to give you that one-on-one -on -one assistance if you should need it we have um, information on our website for how you can book an appointment you can also email us right.place at aamu.edu we're also on facebook and instagram and uh, we'd be happy to help you in any way we can as i said we work in partnership with career services they also do resume workshops and help you with your resumes but uh, we're here to do that as well so 
I've done a lot of talking. I appreciate those of you who chimed in with your input. Do we have anyone with any questions or particular uh, comments that you need to make before we go? 